Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music and in this lesson we are going to learn about rhythmic anticipation, a simple and effective way to make your piano patterns sound a lot more groovier. In this lesson we are going to just take four chords in the key of D major. D major as you people know has two sharps namely F sharp and C sharp. Okay, and the chords which you are going to build in this lesson are the 1 chord, the 4 chord and the 5 chord. So we are going to essentially play them in a nice pattern where we play the chords evenly together and then change it a little bit and try to bring out a sense of groove using a topic called rhythmic anticipation. Right? So before we get started guys, I would request you all to please subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the bell icon for notifications if you haven't already. It will help us to move forward and become like a super famous channel. Okay, so we are going to just take three chords for this exercise. We are going to take the three major chords of the D major scale, namely D major. You can learn that in any of the uh, respective inversions. You could say D F sharp A, F sharp A D, A D F sharp. Okay. Then you could do the four chord, which is the G major chord. G B D, B D G, D G B. And with any of the chords, you're going to play the root of the chord in the bass hand or the left hand. So for D major, you play D. For G major, you play G. And lastly, for the fifth chord, A major, you play A bass and one of the available chord options, which are A, C sharp, E, root position, C sharp, E, A, E, A, C sharp. Now, why do you need these inversions? Just to make the shift between the chords a lot more effective and a lot more smoother. As we always know, chord inversions make life a lot easier on the piano by creating a nice shift and also a great voice leading movement. So it's also sonically great for the listener. Moving on. So the first objective for you guys is to play these four chords in a nice succession. Perhaps one bar per chord would be quite nice. So you play four hits in your right hand. Two, three, four. Change to the A, change to the G, and back to D. Let's do that again. 1, 2, 3, 4. A, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And as always, we are trying to use inversions to make the connection a little more easier okay and a lot more ergonomic if you haven't already do check out my video series on chord inversions we'll be putting it up in the description so watch that in detail that will help you to shift really well and get all the mechanics going for your chord playing anyways so now that you've finished playing that each chord four times can also play a very simple bass by just holding the left hand once one two three four change two three four change two three four back two three four okay so that's the basis now the first thing i'd like you to do is engage what i call as a time feel which is nothing but a division system of the beat so the best way or the easiest way is to start by dividing the beat by two so that will be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and. So that and is at the 50% mark of the beat. So if beat 1 is here and if beat 2 is here, the and is somewhere in the middle. So you count 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. And these are very tried and tested symbols which is used all over the world. So just go with that. It's also not too much of a tongue twister when you speak it, right? So you go 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and change and 2 and 3 and 4 and change and 2 and 3 and 4 and back and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And what's nice about getting that time feel into your system is it could actually translate into something cool in the left hand. So the left hand could create something like see what's happening here with my thumb 
or the other finger i'm either latching on to the fifth of the chord or the octave of the chord and i'm playing it nice and soft so it doesn't really cloud the sound too much it still sounds quite pleasant quite peaceful you hear the right hand more but you feel that division by two time feel you know and two and three and four and one so remember to keep your pinky held and that other finger will need to keep playing the time feel which is and 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 three and four and one so now that you've got that or once you have got that the next thing we are going to do is to apply a very very exciting thing in the field of music or musical rhythm called as rhythmic anticipation so what we do is the first bar we just play as we are playing and three and four and while the second bar the a chord or the a major chord which comes in i'd like you to start hitting that chord not at the one of bar 2 but hit it at four and of bar number 1 so that will be one and two and three and four and one and, and three right so latch on to the and of the four and you're going to change the chord by playing the a major chord So it actually comes before the left hand shifts to the A, which will be beat one of the next bar. And two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and now I can go on and toggle and and so you see that you can create a nice on the beat and off the beat kind of a interplay. So let's see how that goes again. One and two and three and four and that was off two. A major and four and G on the on and four. That's the off D major. On again and four and one and two and super right. So and even the G went off now and four and it kind of gets a bit infectious, you know. To keep doing this, speed it up slightly. some other chords if you want i'm just getting carried away a bit here and so on and so forth so the whole idea is to anticipate and that adds an offbeat flavor as well as the onbeat flavor be a bit uh, wary of your piano in the sense your left hand should try to not follow the right hand so you may not want to do and two and three and four and one that's a bit uh, muddy when the two hands play together right it's like a nice drum groove that's what a drummer would do the drummer would play something and then complement it with something else okay so again the groove eighth notes rhythmic anticipation 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 there we go on 2 and 3 and 4 and and if you guys have a problem with playing the chord changes perhaps you want to work on that later or before you know first do the chord changes or else you could practice rhythmic anticipation with just one chord and just get sort of the independence of both the hands going something like this and four and one and two and three and four and one just focus on the and and one and two and three once you get a grip on d change to a g So that's about eighth notes. Now um, I plan to stop the lesson here, but what I think we should do is also go to divide by four, which is sixteenth notes, right? Who doesn't want to do that? That'll make it sound very groovy and very funky. So if you divide by four, you can count it in the conventional way as one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So now you're dividing the beat by four parts. So you're going to get a lot more. off beats three off beats to be uh, uh, clear the 25% mark or the quarter point of the beat 
the 50% mark which is the and we learnt earlier and the 75% mark which is called as a. Uh. So one e and a. Uh. So the a uh is what we are going to now push that uh, one of bar two back towards. So it's going to be one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a uh, e and a two e and a three and a four e and a uh, and a two e something like this, right? Four e and a uh, e and a two e, three and a four e and a. Uh. So these off beats also, if you observe, I am getting a little bit more excited at the off beats. That I feel is very very important when you are observing the off beats. Otherwise, you are not going to feel the groove. And for the audience to get up on the floor and dance, well, they have to feel something exciting. And you should first feel it, I guess, before you send out that groovy energy to to uh, towards your audience. So let's focus on the a uh of the four, and that should do for the lesson. So you go two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two. Right, so that second chord and the fourth chord, every alternate chord is anticipated. Let's do that again. One e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one. Again, your thumb, which was once playing eighth note uh, ghosts, as we call it, has now moved into the sixteenth note domain because your mind is sort of reacting. Uh, I've done another very important lesson, actually, uh, which I'm going to share in the description. It's about how to feel the groove a lot better or count a, lo a lot better. Uh, I've actually taken a very popular ARM and bass line and I've broken it down quite well. So do check out the link in the description. And as always, if you're not, if you're struggling a bit with chords, uh, watch our chord inversion series. We have a very detailed list of videos which will help you shift your chords a lot better okay so that's about it guys you have eighth note anticipation two and three and four and one and two three and four and then you have 16th note anticipation which means you're moving the next bars beat one a little before time you're anticipating it as we say one e and a 60 note three and a 40 and a one e and a two e and a three and a 40 and a Right, so I hope you guys found this lesson useful and I hope you are going to use it in your music right now. And as always, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. Do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Share the video with your musician friends. And as always, turn on that bell icon for notifications for all of our upcoming videos which will hit you quite regularly uh, as we normally do. Cheers, have a good one and stay safe.